the Andhra Pradesh government is laying the foundation stone for its new capital, Amaravati, on Thursday in Guntur. For this, the government has acquired 32,000 acres of land from farmers in the area. How did they do this? How did they achieve this feat? Vaidinadin Ayer will explain. How did this happen, Vaidhi? See, I think this is a phenomenal feat, especially in the backdrop where we had a land acquisition uh, bill which the central government was trying hard to push through through ordinances. But then what the government, Andhra Pradesh government did was, they did have, uh, uh, they did put out rules on, you know, uh, land acquisition uh, a year back and they went door to door, you know, that is the only way where you acquire land and the compensation which they provided for was really something which the farmers could not say no to. For instance, uh, say for instance, 100 acres is the quantum of land that the state government has to acquire. So 50% is used for social infrastructure and the trunk infrastructure for the capital city. Another 50%, another 25% is used by the government for various other purposes. So the government retains 25% with it. And the balance 25%, that's a huge chunk of land post-development of the city, which is being given back to the farmers of the total land that they've acquired. So the farmers essentially what it means is like for every acre of land which the state government acquired from a farmer it has given 1250 square yards of a residential plot in addition to 200 square yards of a commercial plot in addition to an annuity of roughly about rupees 50000 for the next 10 years so the annual yield for a farmer in andhra pradesh government is roughly about 25000 rupees to 30000 rupees a year they have offered an annuity of 50,000 rupees for 10 years, which is more or less the double the amount of money which the farmer realizes from his, from his farms. So that has been a very super kind of compensation which the farmer has received. So farmers couldn't say no to such a, uh, such a deal. Do you think this model can then be replicated across the country? See, I think this is a great model uh, if farmers agree to part land with and of course it is it comes at a cost to the government also state government also because sharing with the original landowners almost 25 percent of the land acquired is an expensive proposition for a private industry i don't think a private industry or even a government setup can afford to share such a huge uh, percentage of land which has been acquired post development uh, because I'm not certain whether the economics work well, whether the project becomes uh, viable. But this, see, Andhra Pradesh is a completely different because they are building a capital from a, from a scratch. And there is hope that in the next seven to eight years, all this real estate which the farmer is going to get back as part of the deal will also fetch him huge returns. One biggest advantage, of course, in such a land pooling method, which the Andhra Pradesh government uh, calls this acquisition, is that the Andhra Pradesh government doesn't have to go ahead with uh, the social impact assessment and also they don't have to necessarily a priori seek say 80% consent which the 2018 act which is now valid requires. So the 2018 act requires that 80% consent of all landowners is acquired for uh, is required for <coughs> land being acquired for a private project and 70% consent required for land being acquired for a public-private partnership. So these two clauses, the consent clause and the social impact assessment, which every land acquisition deal has to take into account while uh, they initiate the process, that is avoided. So, but then you have to deal with the farmers on a one-to-one -one basis based on huge, that builds also trust and faith and makes them a stakeholder or a partner in profit. So is it then a done deal for Andhra Pradesh also, if another state decides to replicate this program, what is the flip side? Can anything go wrong? See, the flip side is, the flip side is that for private projects, this will turn out to be an expensive proposition. Say, for instance, I don't think the Andhra Pradesh government itself would try to give 25% of the land, uh, of the developed infrastructure land, back to any original landholders for subsequent projects 
because they would now start experimenting things like say for instance i am acquiring say 25 acres of land from you then the andhra pradesh government can say that okay now you take 25 25 acres of land somewhere else in a completely different setup so the farmer might not or the original landholder might not get developed land which the government is developing right now uh, so those are examples which the andhra pradesh government itself is keen to uh, experiment in the next uh, whenever they acquire more land because they will want to build airports they want to build you know factories or various kinds of things which a new capital or a new government would uh, want to do for the state so the flip side is that it can actually turn out to be an expensive proposition uh, but you can always strike a via media where you say that you know instead of 25% you're not giving 25% developed land you are giving little little lesser you are giving a little upfront payment for the land being acquired or you can say that you, you know i'll give you an annuity or based on you know how the project develops you know whether you make them stakeholders in some kind of annual uh, so that they feel prosperous about being part of the economic development of the region so i'm sure there are lots of variants you can try uh, with this model as the base model surely yeah Thank you, Vaidhi. That was Vaidhi Nathan Iyer on the land model adopted by the Andhra Pradesh government for its new capital. Thank you. Keep watching.